Dr. Shabir, the question is, could Buddha have been a Muslim prophet that isn't named in the Quran? To answer that, we have to think about what is meant by a prophet, first of all. So in, in Muslim um, theology, a prophet is someone to whom God communicated directly. And uh, usually that uh, person has uh, a uh, mandate to uh, preach to others as well, to share the message that God has delivered to them. Um, and, and, and it is a kind of uh, inspiration that's different from the one that most people have. Like somebody may say, I'm inspired to do this, uh, or I feel I have a calling uh, to take up the ministry in the church, for example. So this is a very specific and very clear directive to an individual. Um, now, in the Quranic perspective, uh, there have been such individuals at all times in, in uh, all places. Why? Because uh, God uh, is giving this as his uh, uh, part of his mercy, like, it's like benefits, like the air we breathe, the sunlight uh, we benefit from. Uh, the guidance on how to live one's life needs to be accessible to all people at all time. Uh, and and if, if God did not offer such guidance, then people will not be held responsible. God would not have the right to well in a way he has the right because he's the creator he can do whatever he wants theoretically at least but it, it wouldn't be seem morally justified for God to punish anybody without first sending a prophet who speaks to them in their language mm -hmm. so uh, the, in this vein the Quran says that God has sent prophets to every people speaking to them in their language and so on so um, when we look at heroes in the past uh, we are um, uh, we would rather think that there is a great possibility that this was a prophet than to think otherwise because uh, in Muslim um, perspectives we we need we need to find more prophets everywhere mm -hmm. uh, so when we see that such a per great person as the uh, Siddhartha Gautama called the Buddha is um, uh, celebrated in another religion uh, we uh, presume that he might have been a prophet of God now of course uh, the, what is known about his teachings are very different from the Islamic teachings but we always allow for the possibility that uh, a great man's teachings could have been misremembered and misrepresented and misunderstood over time thank you for that interesting answer Dr. Shibrelli you're welcome The Buddha, by cultivating, developing, purifying his mind, he gained enlightenment. Many people actually do not know what is enlightenment. Very loosely they use this word, enlightenment. So one day, when the Buddha was going somewhere, he met a Brahmin. I think you know the meaning of Brahmin, the Hindu priest, teacher, master, guru, for everything. They are called Brah Brahman. He has never seen another human being like this person. So he could not believe that this is a human being. He came and asked, may I know whether you are a god? The Buddha says, no, I am not a god. Others try to claim they are god or messenger of god or son of god. The Buddha says, no, I am not a god. Then he asked, in that case, may I know whether you are any other form of supernatural living being? He said, no, I am very natural. <laughs> then he asked, in that case, are you an ordinary human being? No. Now confusing in his mind who this person is. Then, yeah, then who are you? Uh, the Buddha gave the answer. This answer is very important for us to know, to understand who the Buddha is. If somebody come and ask you, now you follow the Buddha, can you tell me actually who the Buddha is? But I don't think you can give correct answer. You say something, this self-introduction given by the Buddha is very meaningful. We can understand why he is called enlightened one. 
He said in his own language, <coughs> Abhinyayang Abhinyatang. I understood everything that which exists in this universe. Bhaveta Bhancha Bhavita. I have practiced all the great qualities, virtues, morals, principles, and good qualities in this world. Pahatabhang Pahinang Me. I have eradicated, uprooted all the wicked, cruel, harmful, immoral thought, words, and action. Tasma Buddha in Brahmana. Therefore, I am not a god, not an angel, not an ordinary man. I am the Buddha. Ah, this is the meaning of the Buddha or enlightenment. Buddha is not his name. Buddhi in Sanskrit Pali languages means wisdom. Buddhi. Buddha means person who got that supreme enlightenment. That person is called the Buddha. So, you can understand how difficult it is for a person to develop his mind to know everything that which exists in this universe. He has not done this within one lifetime. Life after life, by practicing parami or perfection, he went on cultivating, developing, knowing, understanding all the existing things. That is why the Buddhas are very rare. Now, 2,500 years ago, Sakyamuni, the Buddha, appeared. But we do not know how many thousands or how many millions of years we had to wait to see another Buddha. That is the most difficult task in this world, becoming a Buddha. Cultivate all the great qualities, virtues, principles, morals, and eradicate all the evil, wicked, cruel, harmful, immoral things. Take, for instance, how difficult it is. Now, all of us have jealousy. Jealousy is very minor weakness. We know we never gain anything because of our jealousy. We create very bad atmosphere, we create enemies for nothing. Even then, can we completely eradicate the jealousy from our minds within one lifetime? There's no one who can do that. Here, Bodhisattva, before becoming a Buddha, he is called Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva means, Bodhi means wisdom, Sattva means person. Person who was working to gain supreme wisdom is called Bodhisattva. So as a Bodhisattva, life after life he went on developing, developing, cultivating, eradicating, eradicating evil things then purified the mind. It is impossible for us to find out another human being who has purified his or her mind. Can behave as cultured, understanding, kind, honest person. But the evil thought, the roots of the evil thoughts are in the mind. 
circumstances, environment, temptation, irritation, flare up. One of those evil thoughts which are dominating in our mind. Therefore, it is not so easy to purify our mind. But he said, his mind is completely purified. The purity of the mind and the supreme wisdom, knowledge, understanding, realization he had combined together. Then the brightness is there. In his first sermon, Dhamma Chakka Sutta, the Buddha says, Aloko Udapadi, brightness arose in his mind that he never had before. In our mind, there is no brightness because mind is in the dark. There are so many dark clouds around our mind. Greed, selfishness, anger, jealousy, grudge, ill will, all these are dark cloud moving around our mind. Therefore, mind is in the dark. That is why we cannot understand, we cannot see things properly. We create our own imagination, wrong concept, wrong belief, wrong ideas, because we cannot see the reality in life or anything that which exists. So the Buddha has done this. Then after gaining enlightenment, he advised. There were sixty arahantas. Arahanta means those who have completely purified they are mine. They are perfect saints. They are not enlightened. They are perfect saints. He said, Charata bhikkave charikang bahujana hitai bahujana sukhaya lokanukampaya atthaya hitaya sukhaya deva manusam. This is the first missionary religion in this world. Buddhism is the first missionary religion. After training these sixty arahantas, the Buddha said, Charata bhikkhave charika. Now go forth, go out. Two persons should not go together individually, one by one, to spread all over the country. Bahujana hitai, for the well-being of others. It is your duty to guide, to correct, show them the correct path, how to lead a respectable, harmless life. Bahujana Hitai, Bahujana Sukhai, for the happiness of others. Many people are worrying and crying and lamenting and whole day and night, not knowing what to do. But you must go out and try to make them to understand the nature of their problems and troubles and difficulties that they are facing. Bahujana Sukhaya. Bahujana Hitaya must have sympathy, kindness, compassion toward them and guide them to lead a respectable life. Uh, this is what mission that the Buddha wanted to introduce. He did not want to introduce a religion. 
he did not want to introduce Buddhism. He wanted to introduce how to lead a respectable, harmless, noble life. Oh, that is the main purpose of his message.